This section deals with graphs of higher degree polynomial functions. We are going to take a look at being able to graph or sketch the graph of any polynomial function. Let's start by defining what a polynomial function is. Well, a polynomial function is any function that has a degree 2 or higher. And their graphs are usually smooth and continuous. Well, what does smooth mean? Well, smooth means that it's not going to have a sharp corner. So if you think about the absolute value function, it is a V. Well, there is a very sharp corner for the absolute value function. That's not a polynomial because of that sharp corner. So all polynomial functions are not going to have sharp corners, which again means that they're going to be smooth. Continuous means that there's no breaks. So the kind of functions that we saw in piecewise defined functions, that's not going to be a polynomial function. So polynomial functions, degree two or higher, their graphs are smooth and continuous. Okay, well how do we graph these things? What do we do in order to graph these things? Well, there's really three things that we need to look at. The first one is we need to figure out what the end behavior of the graph is. Then we need to find this x, the x-intercepts of that graph plus the multiplicity of those intercepts. And finally, we need to find the y-intercept. So to graph any general polynomial, we're going to need to know three things. The first is end behavior. Then we need to know the x-intercepts and the multiplicity for those x-intercepts and then the y-intercept. So let's now talk about how we'd find end behavior, then we're going to talk about x-intercepts and multiplicity, and finally y-intercepts. So let's just start with end behavior. What is end behavior? How do we find it? What does it mean? So end behavior is really just what the graph looks like at its ends, way to the left and way to the right. So in order to find end behavior, we need to know two things about our function. The first one is the degree of that function. Well, what does degree mean? Well, the degree of the function is the largest exponent of the polynomial once it's completely distributed. Well, what does that mean? Well, it has to not have any more parentheses in there. You have to completely distribute it so all you have is a bunch of terms. So once it's in the format where it's just a bunch of terms, then you're completely distributed and you're going to be able to note what your highest exponent is. So the degree is the highest exponent. Maybe it's 5, maybe it's 10, maybe it's 2, but you always look for the degree, the highest exponent. Then you also need to note the leading coefficient. Well, the leading coefficient is going to be the number in front of the variable with the highest degree. Right? So if your highest degree is 10, then you're going to look at the number or you know the coefficient of the variable with the degree of 10. If your highest degree is 2 or square, then you're going to look for the leading coefficient, which is going to be whatever number is in front of the variable with that exponent. All right, so end behavior depends on us knowing the degree and the leading coefficient. But what does it mean? What do we do with that information? Well, four different things can happen. What's going to matter to you is, okay, well, is that degree even or is that degree odd? Then for leading coefficients, what we're going to care about is whether that leading coefficient is positive or negative. So again, we're going to say, okay, well, was my leading coefficient positive or was my leading coefficient negative? So we're going to be identifying the degree and the leading coefficient for our functions, and then we're going to be placing it into, okay, where did it fall? So if you happen to have a degree that's even and a leading coefficient that's positive, so for example, that would be something like f of x is equal to x squared because the degree is even and the leading coefficient, which would be the number in front of my x, there's no number there, so it's an implied 1. Well, the number 1 is positive. So given some kind of function with an even degree and a positive leading coefficient, its end behavior, or the way that it behaves at its ends, is up to the left and up to the right. So it's not saying anything about what happens here in the middle. I have no idea what happens in the middle. We're going to use our x-intercepts and our y-intercepts, multiplicity, all that to find out the middle. But our end behavior says, okay, well, if it's degree even, leading coefficient positive, up and up on the left and right. Well, if your degree is even, and your leading coefficient is negative, well, what you would have here is end behavior that looks like this, down left and down right. For example, if I gave you a function like f of x is equal to negative x squared, again, my degree is even, the highest exponent is even, but my leading coefficient is negative. So any function that has an even degree and a leading coefficient that's negative has 
and behavior that goes down and down. All right, well, what happens if you're odd? Well, if you're odd and you are leading coefficient positive, so you're odd, but your leading coefficient is positive, what you're going to be doing is you're going to go down left and up right. So if you're odd and your leading coefficient is positive, you're down left and up right. For example, that's something like f of x is equal to x cubed, right? Because 3 is an odd number, and again, my leading coefficient would be the number in front of x. No number there, it's an implied 1, but 1 is positive. So if you have anything like this, then you know, okay, well, at its ends, I'm going down to the left, up to the right. If that leading coefficient is negative, what you're going to be doing is going up to the left, and down to the right, up to the left and down to the right. So for example, if I were to give you something like f of x is equal to negative x cubed, again, cubed, odd, leading coefficient, negative, you're going to be going up, left, down, right. Well, the important thing to note here is that if you're even, if your degree is even, you have two options. You're either going up and up, that's if your leading coefficient is positive, or you're going down and down if your leading coefficient is negative. The other side of that coin, if the degree is odd, then if your leading coefficient is positive, you go down left, up right. If your leading coefficient is negative, you go up left, down right. So evens go in the same direction, either both up or both down. Odds go in opposite direction, up and down or down and up, depending on what you have. So let's take a moment and try to identify the end behavior of these functions. Example one. What do I need to know in order to find end behavior? One is the degree of the function, and two, I need to know the leading coefficient. So let's start with the degree. Well, the degree of this function, well, what's the highest exponent? Well, all I have is a variable of x, but there's no exponent on it, but we know that there's always a 1 there. So my degree is 1. Now, is that an odd number, or is that an even number? 1's an odd number, so that means I have an odd degree. That matters to me. Now my leading coefficient. My leading coefficient, really I care about, is it positive or is it negative? Well, let's see. Leading coefficient. My leading coefficient is going to be the number in front of the variable with the highest degree. For me, that's the number 2. Was well, the number 2 positive or is it negative? 2 is a positive number. So I know that my end behavior matches with something that is odd and positive. And again, you're going to have to have these memorized, but if I have odd end behavior and a positive leading coefficient, that's this square right here, and that tells me, all right, well, that means my end behavior is down to the left and up to the right. So the end behavior for this function, f of x equals 2x to the first plus 5, would be down left, up right. What about example 2? Again, first thing. Need to find the degree and the leading coefficient. Well, the degree of this function is 4. And the reason that it's 4 is that the highest exponent is 4. So my degree is 4. Well, is 4 an even number or is 4 an odd number? It is an even number, so I know I'm an even degree function. Well, what's my leading coefficient? Well, my leading coefficient is going to be the number in front of the variable to the fourth degree. So the number in front of that is negative 1 fourth. So is negative 1 fourth a negative or a positive number? Well, it's negative, so I need to figure out, all right, well, what kind of end behavior am I going to have if I'm an even degree function with a negative leading coefficient? Well, if I look up here, even degree functions with negative leading coefficients have end behavior that goes down and down. So this particular function would look like this on its ends. It would go down left and down right. All right, example three. Again, determine degree, determine your leading coefficient. If I take a look at this, this is not all distributed, is it? Well, I don't want to waste my time distributing every single little thing out. The easiest way to find the degree is take a look at the x's in each one of those parentheses. So in the first parentheses, I have an x with no coefficient. All right, well, that's going to get multiplied to the second parentheses, an x that's going to be squared. So that's going to look like that. The last parentheses has an x all by itself, so it's going to look like that. 
Well, if I multiply x times x squared times x, what am I going to get? Well, I'm going to get an x to the fourth power. So when I multiply, again, x times x squared times x, I get x to the fourth power. What does that mean? That means that the degree of this function is x to the fourth. So if I were to have distributed all of this out, and again, I don't recommend that because it takes too long. And when we find x-intercepts, we're going to have to factor it anyway, so you'd be wasting a lot of time if you distribute it. But what you need to do is take a look. Each one of those parentheses, what's going on with my x's? How many do I have? And that's what you're multiplying together. So again, I figured out that my degree was 4, and I know that 4 is an even number. Well, what about the leading coefficient? Well, leading coefficient, I would kind of determine the same thing here. Was there a number in front of that x? No. But if I wanted to, I could have put a 1 there. Was there a number in front of this x? No. Well, I wanted to, I could have put a 1 there, and 1 squared, because remember, this one was squared, would have been 1. Last one, was there a number in front of x there? No. But I could have put a 1 there. So, 1 times 1 times 1 is going to give me 1. What does that mean? My leading coefficient there is 1. What kind of number is 1? 1 is a positive number. So I have to figure out what kind of end behavior is an even degree function with a positive leading coefficient going to have. And again, an even degree function with a positive leading coefficient is going to have end behavior that goes up and up. So up both left and right. So the end behavior for this particular function is going to be up to the left and up to the right. All right, well, let's take a look at that very last one. I have negative 3 times x minus 5 times x plus 1 squared times x minus 3. From here, I don't have any x's, but I know I have a negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that. From the middle, I have just an x, no coefficient. So it's going to be times x. From the next middle term, I have x plus 1 squared. Well, if I square 1, that's just going to be x squared. From the last one, I have x just all by itself, so I have just times x. So what is negative 3x times x squared times x? Well, that is a negative 3x to the fourth. x times x squared times x is x to the fourth, and we're multiplying all that by negative 3. Great. So what does that mean to me? Well, that means that my degree is 4, which is even. Well, what about my leading coefficient? Well, if you look here again, I had to multiply that negative 3, because in the end, that's going to multiply to everything by all those x's, and that gave me negative 3 as my leading coefficient. So my leading coefficient is negative 3. Well, negative 3 is a negative number, so what kind of end behavior does an even degree function with negative leading coefficient have? Well, that one's just right here. It's down both left and right. Well, that's it for finding end behavior. The next video is going to deal with finding multiplicity and x-intercepts.